Hello and welcome to another video on time series forecasting, where we would be looking at some basic models leading up to seasonality in Arima. So we would begin with the autoregressive model, where as most of you might be familiar, we talk about an autoregressive model and uh, describe the order, which is P, and that is essentially referring to the number of lags that we can have as part of our, as part of defining a predicted value at time t that is given by yt over here. yt basically is the predicted value at time t given as a function of the summation of the past values. And we say the past p values, where you are having a multiplier alpha for each of those past terms. And the summation of all these past observations added to a certain term epsilon, which is nothing but the white noise. So every time series consists of certain amount of white noise, which is the kind of the kind of uh, pattern which is uh, available in time series that cannot be quite defined. It's too random to be able to model. That's why it's called as white noise. Something that is always an additional term that is beyond what the model itself defines. So that's for our autoregressive model. Moving average is uh, not to be confused with the past terms or the moving average of the past observations rather of the time series. Moving average is actually referring to the average of the residuals, which is given here by YTI times theta i or to be more accurate it should not be y t i y t minus i over here what we will be really getting is epsilon as the error right the past error say past q errors are what we are interested in since the moving average is of order q so if q is equal to one, we're talking about the error of the error of the t minus t minus one observation, which is the immediate past observation from the current time t. We multiply this by theta. There is now again a multiplier in place. So likewise, if we have q terms, then we are summing up all these terms. This is added to the mean of all the observations, mean of all the past observations. And once again, we have a term that denotes the white noise. So that's for autoregressive and moving average. Typically, as you go deeper and deeper in, in terms of uh, analyzing past observations, we end up combining autoregressive as well as moving average. Using just one is not so much of a common occurrence. So that's what happens in the ARMA model, which is nothing but autoregressive moving average combined together. We can see how our terms now get combined here, where we have the autoregressive terms for the P order and the moving average term for the K order. This should be once again, epsilon over here. Right, accounting for the moving average on the past errors. And mu would be, in some sense, a constant. Probably we can add it and, and to, the, uh, to the epsilon value and uh, get one term over there. So that's for the ARMA. However, ARMA is not quite accounting for making the data stationary which is when we, we bring autoregressive integrated moving average into play. 
where your predicted value yt is given by what we have for ARMA, which is using the pth order of the autoregressive model, the qth order of your moving average model. The only difference is there is going to be one step of making the data stationary. We make this time series stationary, which is to say there is a constant mean and constant variance throughout the data. And uh, this is done by the technique of differencing. Differencing technique employed where you can difference the time series with a certain order, which we refer to as D, right? So we are diff if you're differencing the time series by just a single order, which is to say, we are finding out the difference of consecutive observations and creating a new, a new series that becomes our, our time series that is said to be the order one Differencing of order one. Now, if we repeat that differencing once again with the initially created terms, we are talking about increasing the order of differencing. So here we perform the step of differencing, make the data stationary. As many times we have to perform differencing to make the data stationary. And thereafter, we use the ARMA equation or function to obtain our predicted value. So from here on, we can talk about adding a seasonal component to this ARIMA model, which makes it seasonal ARIMA, where we do have the PDQ, and we also have a seasonal aspect to the same PDQ, which we may refer to as capital P, D, and Q, right? This being the seasonality aspect, which is really talking about adding those terms for the ARIMA model, only we now account for the seasonality that is present in the data. So this is very useful for talking about, say, our stock price prediction or the uh, temperature forecast, where a certain seasonality may be seen in our data, right? When we come once again in our next video, we come together, we would be discussing Sarima as well as Sarimax, which is introducing the endogenous aspect to the Sarima model.